Okay, the RTX 3050 is possibly one of the most popular cards out there. Yes, it's a low-end card, and if you have something like this, you probably are pairing it with a budget CPU as well, like the Ryzen 5600. The question is, is this combo still good enough in 2025? So we're gonna test this in a few games, and we're also gonna see if it's worth upgrading. We're gonna upgrade it to an RTX 4060 and maybe even an RX 9070 XT AMD's latest mid-range GPU. So we have a lot of tests to go through. Let's start with our first game. And our first game is Cyberpunk 2077. This is 1080p Ultra and you can see right here, boys, that we're just running 40 fps but do not this is ultra so you can lower the settings and you'll get much higher fps let's see if we enable dls is oh and we enable dls is and you would gain an extra 10 fps as shown here if we're just running with that one dls is 1080p you're getting about 50 58 that's quite good right i mean it's a single player game and if you want the more FPS, you can just lower down the settings. This is ultra, and I think this looks good. Next game is Oblivion Remastered, and like any other games with Unreal Engine, you will get some stuttering. You will get 50 FPS on the outside um, environment, you will get some stutters. However, when we move into our inside environment, you know, in the dungeons, you will get about 70. It's quite good. It's okay, right? I mean, it's a single player game and we do have DLSS enabled in this one, but it's okay. Next up is Warzone up in here. This is 1080p and 1080p DLSS. We tried to compare both of these modes so we can see if you're actually gaining more because DLSS looks nice. So we would need that extra FPS and we're getting about 20 FPS more. So we'd stay with that one. In game, you are getting really good experience here. You do note that we may be a CPU bottleneck in here as well. You can see that we're running about 80% at one point there with our CPU. So yeah, let's see later on if we swap over to the 4060, if there's actually much difference in there. Here we have Marvel Rivals and you're beginning about 100 FPS. We did turn the DLSS and this one. So yeah, it's low settings, but we have DLSS turned on in here. If you just look at like 1080p with against DLSS and you will see that huge difference in there. 83 FPS against 120, no brainer, right? Let's just turn on DLSS if you're playing this game. Next game is Delta Force and in here boys, you'll be getting about 130 FPS. We also turn on DLSS on this one. If you're curious on how it turns out against native, then it's the same thing, right? You'll be getting about 20 FPS between the two modes right DLSS and native because it's a fast-paced game you you might as well just turn on DLSS right you, we need those extra frames on our firing benchmark it's the same thing look at that really huge difference boys yeah look at the lows so it's definitely recommended to turn on DLSS Apex Legends you'll be getting about 150 plus FPS 100 yeah 40 we're GPU ball neck in here but it's fine it's fine we're able to hit our shots here yes you wouldn't get like 200 plus FPS however you just have to adjust your gameplay here yes you'll be a bit of a handicap but yeah you're still able to hit those shots next up is PUBG and in here we are using competitive settings we haven't maxed out our GPU in here where it's okay right it's okay you'll be getting about 100 140 FPS yes there is that level of stuttering but yeah that's PUBG and you do get a lot of stuttering in this map somehow and I think that's because when they implemented like you know destroyable environments and that's probably why this map has a lot of stutters and Fortnite could also be okay you are not GPU bottleneck in here so this is totally fine at 1080p you'll be getting about 200 plus FPS no problems at all 100 on the 1% lows. Yes, it could be better, but it is playable. Another game wherein you you need a lot of FPS is Valorant, and in here you'd actually be okay. You'll be okay. You'd be getting about 300, 400 FPS, depending on the scene. The ESU would be CPU bottleneck in here. The RTX 3050 will be totally fine at 1080p with Valorant. And Hell Divers 2, we are obviously GPU bottleneck in here. This game demands GPU and CPU power. So yeah, we're getting about 80 FPS depending on the scene so we're in super hell dive difficulty in here with a lot of bugs a lot of things going on a lot of explosion they're getting about 70 80 FPS there is that level of micro status there it's fine it's fine it's a PVE game you'll be fine 
And lastly, we have Battle of XL2. And in this game, you will be GPU bottleneck. We have enabled uh, DLSS in here, and there are scenes wherein it does push the CPU as well. It depends on, yeah, look at that one. There's that 85% in there. So it's really stressing the CPU depending on the quantity of the mount. Okay, let's see how the RTX 3050 compares against the 460 or the RX 9070 XT. First up is Cyberpunk 2077. And in here, boys, this is just native 1080p. You're getting about 20 FPS more with the RTX 4060. If we move to the RX 1970 XT, that lead pushes even further. One thing to note in here though is you will be getting lower GPU power with the RTX 4060. When we move to Oblivion Remastered, you will be getting more FPS with the RTX 4060 and the power consumption will be a little bit better. When we move to the RX 1970 XT, yes, the FPS pushes more and yeah, you do get a slightly lesser stuttering in here compared to the to our RTX 3050 however yeah this is oblivion it's unreal engine you will get that stuttering regardless and yeah so look at the power consumption it's not much different as well warzone and we've got 1080p in here and with the rtx 4060 you will be getting much more higher fps and this is even native that's 30 plus fps more than the 3050 when we go to the rx 1970 xt you do notice that the rx 1970 xt is not performing as good as the 4060 in here like look at the lows the rtx 3050 is actually better than the lows and we did a test on this one i think the rx 1970 xt actually performs better when it's at higher resolution and delta force this is no contest, boys. Look at that. 100 FPS against almost double the FPS. So, no brainer. If you want to go for the RTX 4060, go for it. Whether on a firing scene or the walking benchmark, yeah, no brainer. When we move to the RX 1970, it's even higher, right? It's way higher. You do have higher power consumption as well. So, you will probably need to upgrade your power supply if you are on um, going to upgrade to the RX 1970 XT. In Marvel Rivals, now this is N80 be native for both you will be getting 20 plus fps actually no yeah you'll be getting much more higher fps with the rtx 4060 and with the rx 9070 xt yes that will push even higher but look at the power consumption here boys look at the power consumption we're not cheap you bottleneck with the rx 9070 xt it is consuming less power compared to the rtx 3050 unusual right apex legends now and this is obvious boys, the RTX 4060 is just a better card here. A practical upgrade if you're playing Apex Legends at 1080p. When we look at the RX 9070 XT, it's the same thing. Much more higher FPS and look at that one. Much lower GPU power. More efficient, right? More efficient at 1080p. Of G now, and with the RTX 4060, you'll be getting 100 plus FPS over your current one. When we move to the RX 9070 XT, that's even much higher. However, something to consider is the GPU power key. Right, so if you want to do, go that route, you'll have to upgrade your power supply too. And on Path of Exile 2, the RTX 4060 is actually not much different to the RTX 3050. When we compare it to the RX 9070 XT, you will get slightly higher higher FPS with the RX 9070 XT. Power consumption is more or less the same. Actually much lower than the RX 9070 XT. Now this game usually favors NVIDIA cards, so you might be better with the RTX 5070 or something like that, right? A, a, a modern NVIDIA card, because this game naturally favors NVIDIA cards. However, in this case, like the RX 9070 XT at 1080p is actually good, right? at much lower power consumption than the RTX 3050. The RTX 3050 is definitely showing that it may need to be upgraded on certain games. However, if you are okay with its current state, then you could probably just be content with it. If you just want to slap and upgrade, the RTX 4060 is definitely a solid option. You don't have to upgrade the power supply, just slap it in. And you could also go with the RX 9070 XT, although there are only a few games wherein you would benefit from it. If you want to have a look at the RTX 4060, we also did a dedicated video on this and even tried it on 1440p so if you're curious about that click this video over here and i'll see you guys over there